Hi everyone. Welcome back to today's math channel. I'm your host, David Tear. Today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I thought I'd talk about uh, uh, the perpetual calendar based on the Gregorian calendar and how we can use it to compute uh, days of the week given an arbitrary date, month, and year from uh, from the Gregorian calendar. So um, anyway, uh, Here's a little bit of history. Uh, the Gregorian calendar, I guess, it was Pope Gregory the Thirteenth who who came up with this calendar. It was a it was a fix of the Julian calendar, which Julius Caesar came up with, I think, in forty five B C. Um, he had added a leap year every four years, so we had pretty much the same calendar we had today, except we uh, it wasn't modified enough. Uh, uh, it wasn't really that accurate because. Uh, uh, the actual year is about 365.2422 days, and this was exactly 30, 365.25. So by 1582, we'd already drifted about, I think it was uh, 10 or 11 days away from where we should have been. So uh, uh, Pope Gregory uh, modified the calendar. He he had a, he, he decided to uh, uh, eliminate leap years for terms of centuries except if the century was uh, divisible by four. So, for instance, uh, we did, uh, we 2000, the year 2000 was a leap year because 2000 is divisible by 400, but 2100 will not be a leap year because it is a turn of the century, but it's not divisible by 400. So, anyway, that, that pretty much fixed the calendar. Now our calendar is very accurate. I think it only... It's something like 25 seconds a year. It's for all practical purposes. It's as accurate as we could want it to be. Uh, anyway, that's a little bit of history. Um, I think in 1753, they actually had to add another 11 days to the calendar just to adjust it. But uh, So that's how we basically got the calendar we have today. Um, and uh, um, Gauss, uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss, the great uh, um, 19th century... Uh, um, German mathematician, he came up with a, a nice formula for computing the day of the week given any any date, month, and year uh, from the Gregorian calendar. I guess it just has to be 1753 or later. As long as we're using that calendar, this, this formula should work. And as you can see, it's kind of a complicated formula, but uh, it's not really that hard to use. I mean, uh, um, what you have to do, I mean, I'll just tell you what all these symbols are. So here's the form. I mean, you can read it off. But uh, these percent, percent symbols mean mod, modulus. This is what computers usually use to determine. It's just the remainder when you divide by the thing after it. So these numbers here, capital D, little d is the day of the week. And here's the code on the lower right, uh, zero Sunday. So you just go through the days of the week as you would see them on an ordinary calendar, Sunday through Saturday. But then you start Sunday, you, you give that the code zero, and then you just keep going. Monday's one, Tuesday two, all the way to Saturday, which is six. And uh, um, the other uh, symbols here, at A stands for the year number, just the full year, uh, four-digit year. A little m is the month offset. This is probably the most complicated thing in this formula because it's not no enough to just know the the month number. You also have to uh, calculate this offset that's a uh, you know, uh, result of what month it is of the year. Uh, this has to do with the fact that you know, our, our months aren't exactly four weeks and the offset's kind of you know, uh, a cumulative uh, number of uh, extra days at the end of each month. So uh, these numbers give the month offsets. And you'll notice that from March through December, the offset depends on whether it's a leap year or not. If it's a leap year, you have to use the numbers on the bottom. Otherwise, you use the numbers on the top. Um, and so uh, then everything else, you just use this formula to calculate what day of the week it is. <laughs> uh, you could even do this in your head if you memorize this month formula. I've actually been able to calculate days of the week in my head. It's not that easy, but I can do it. So let, let's just do a couple examples. Uh, Suppose we want to know what day of the week it is today. I mean, you guys should know it's Friday, but uh, suppose you didn't know that. Suppose uh, suppose today wasn't today. Suppose today was uh, 100 years ago, and 
We wanted to know what day it was on May uh, 3rd, 2024, what day of the week that was. So we could do it using Gauss's formula. Let's just go through it. A, that's the year number, that's 2024. Little m, that's the month offset for May. Since uh, 2024 is a leap year, it's going to be 2. So a little m is 2. Uh, capital D, that's the date on the calendar, and it's the 3rd, so capital D is 3. So now we just plug in all the numbers, and here's the formula. I wrote it out again. Let's uh, plug in the numbers. Uh, so D is 3. Uh, you, can, you can do all the math. Uh, uh, there's a few tricks you can do here. Uh, you can you can um, use you can calculate remainders modulo seven of numbers inside this parentheses next to the seven because uh, modulus respects uh, um, multiplication and uh, all the arithmetic operations. So I yeah I just did some simplifications here. I'm not going to go through all the steps, but. When you're done, you do get 5 for the answer, which corresponds to Friday. So this formula tells you that today is Friday. And uh, let's do a little bit more interesting example. Suppose we wanted to know the day of the week that the Declaration of Independence was signed. I think you guys all know it was July 4th, 1776. Very famous date in history. Most people don't know what day of the week it was, though. Let's apply the formula again. So again, we just do the same kind of number crunching. Uh, I don't think I should go through all the steps. I'll, I'll just go through a little bit of it. So uh, like I said, uh, the year was 1776. The month offset, since it was July, and it was leap year, the month offset is zero. That makes life kind of interesting and easier. I don't have to worry about that one. The date was the fourth. So let's just see what we get when we plug in these numbers. So capital D is four, little m is zero. Uh, then we have 5 times 8 minus 1 is now 1775. So we're going to take 1775 mod 4. Uh, and uh, um, that's just 3. Uh, I'll, I'll go do that on the next line. Then we have 4 times 1775 mod 100. That's just 75. And then 6 times 1775 mod 400. That's 175. So I wrote all this down in the next line. We have 4 plus 5 times 3 plus 4 times 75 plus 6 times 175 on modulo 7. 175 happens to be a multiple of 7. So, so this is, the last term is going to give us 0. And uh, now I'm just simplifying things. 5 times 3 is 15. And then 75 mod 7 is 5. So we simplify to 4 plus 15 plus 4 times 5 plus 0. I don't have to worry about the 0. And 15 mod 7 is 1. So that's 4 plus 1. 4 times 5 is 20. This is easy. Uh, we just have 25 inside the parentheses. So 25 mod 7. That's easy to calculate. That's 4. So uh, July 4th, 1776 was a Thursday. The Declaration of Independence of, was signed on a Thursday. So that's how you use the Gauss's formula to calculate days of the week. Uh, and uh, before I get off of this, I just want to say one thing about, you know, I think this was easier to do in the 20th century, by the way. Uh, you know, the 20th century had a little bit, uh, the, I used to use a little bit different month code than this. I think the, the month offsets I was using were, were uh, one larger. I think they had a different code for days of the week. And there was a nice mnemonic for remembering the month code. It was one, instead of what we have here, we added one to every number, uh, uh, including the numbers in the top row. So it was one four four zero two five zero three six one four six. And the way I, I like to memorize this formula, notice that if we group them in threes, one four four, that's a square, that's twelve squared. Zero two five, that's five squared. Zero three six, that's six squared. One four six, that's not a square, but it's only off by a, by two. So that's pretty easy to memorize. And I guess if you want to memorize Gauss's formula, just subtract one from everything. But remember to, uh, I guess you don't have to worry about if it's a leap year. You, you leave it alone. It, it still is the same thing it was before if it's a leap year. So anyway, that's just a nice mnemonic for remembering the month offsets. And that that is how you use Gauss's formula to calculate days of the week uh, using the perpetual calendar. Uh,
Anyway, that's that completes my video for today. Thank you for watching and long live math. And I'll see you next time.